So thank you, sir. Thank you everybody. Welcome, Randy here just to say a uh, big shout out to Content Connections as a, uh, a supporter, uh, a partner in quality uh, and the work that they're doing certainly across here. And they're uh, wonderful to see them here and be a part of this as a sponsor for what we're doing. So looking forward to hearing a lot more from Harji and Grant as to what's going on. Over to you guys. Thank you, Randy. Appreciate it. Uh, Grant's going to be uh, monitoring our um, chat room, uh, so I will be exclusively focusing on the presentation. So uh, I'll do my best. Um, there's a lot to cover. Um, there's going to be a lot thrown at you. Uh, be mindful that uh, you don't necessarily have to use everything uh, when you're using a content product. It's to expose you to different elements that are available from us. And as any good professional development um, you know, goes, you take some things and you run with it and, and try it out, right? So uh, the hope is the same here. Uh, and thank you for everyone for joining us. And thank you for your, um, you know, um, generous commitment to us for the last 15 years. I think we're over in 50 districts providing math content in the past. And obviously, we're expanding into other areas. And that will be discussed further in uh, tomorrow's session, so I won't dive into that. That's not really our focus uh, today. Um, so with that, I'll just uh, you know uh, move on. And uh, uh, as many of you know, we are a uh, Canadian company uh, from British Columbia. We are the oldest uh, content provider here. Uh, I think we're older than BCLN now, WCLN and Study Forge. So we were the first to kind of you know innovate around uh, online content. Um, and we continue to do that and invest in that, and it's a really rewarding um, area for us. And um, uh, in addition to um, being part of Content Connections, I've been involved personally and blessed to be involved in uh, SAIL, uh, uh, Surrey Academy of Innovative Learning. I've been there over 15 years, and uh, my education background is aligned with what I do. Um, I've got a master's in educational technology, so I thought but it's some use, right? So, and some of the things you'll see is a, is a byproduct of our thinking. So, um, student engagement. All right, I think, I think that's the biggest thing. How do we engage students in an online course? Uh, there are many challenges uh, around that and, uh, and how do we actually monitor that? So uh, I really wanna dive into that, but before we do that, uh, we want to look at three questions uh, that are, uh, you know, really of uh, importance to us. Is first of all, is what is student engagement? What does it what does it look like in an online classroom? And how do we measure student engagement? Right? Um, are some of the questions I think we need to dive into before we actually get into what we offer as a as a product for you guys. Um, to me, student engagement is a, a, you know, basically a motivation to learn. For uh, you know, that primarily depends on the content, uh, on the content, um, you know, the activities, the assessments that um, that you provide in the learning management system uh, of your choice, and you know that really drives the motivation uh, of the learner, right? Uh, if it is really text-based um, uh, content, people have to read through many pages of it. Uh, likely, a, a, a likelihood of a, a teenager engaging in that is a um, is a, you know very remote. Uh, it's hard to get their attention in a classroom, let alone having to focus on reading on a on a computer. Um, uh, the other aspect of student engagement is persistence to uh, work through challenges. Uh, I think having that grit, um, value-based learning, uh, if they can attach some value to it, uh, they're definitely uh, going to um, work hard at it, right? If there is no attachment to the, to the learning, they're less likely to, uh, you know, participate uh, in the learning process. And then the third thing to me is uh, engaged in constructing knowledge. I, I think, um, you need to have a, a student that is um, thinking deeply and making connections to prior knowledge and uh, real world applications. Uh, some of these elements uh, we will present, as I said, in tomorrow's um, presentation, 
So uh, today I'm just gonna focus on some of the technology aspect to make this possible from our perspective. Um, we really need to you know, shift the, our thinking in what student engagement is when we're looking at an online environment. Less of a focus on teaching the content because that's there. More of a focus on observing what students will be doing to comprehend the content. So what is the process they're going through? And in fact, how do we even know what kind of process they're going through when they're in your course? Um, you know, it's, it's a challenging task because there isn't a lot of information available. Unlike in a classroom, you have a, a lot of um, information available at your disposal that allows you to um, kind of, um, uh, you know, see if a student is actually engaged in the learning process. You can question them, you can have interviews, uh, all sorts of various methods that a face-to-face -face lend it, lends itself. But an online environment, it, it, it is a bit more challenging. Not impossible, but a bit more challenging. Um, next, let's try to, there we go. To me, an online classroom, what does it look like? Is I use the black box analogy. Um, you know, I, I see students coming in as, as being an online teacher for the last 15 years. They come into my learning management system and they leave uh, the learning management system. Some successful, some not so successful, some I'm able to engage with, some don't even, I don't even realize that they were there just because of the, the, the size uh, and the transient population. Uh, of students in my classroom. Uh, they come and go. Uh, it's hard to monitor who's coming in today, who's leaving tomorrow. So how do we make a classroom, an online classroom that allows us actually to, uh, you know, um, measure engagement, right? Um, how do we know, how are these students interacting with, for example, a, a lesson? Uh, how are they engaging with the practice work? And maybe uh, some sort of formative assessment that may exist in a, in a lesson. Um, and none of that stuff currently exists. I, I teach math and physics and none of that is available at my disposal. Uh, at best, I can see a student is coming in and logging in for a period of time and, and uh, leaving. And maybe I can, you know, even a little more I can look at whether or not they have kind of uh, looked at certain pages, but it doesn't tell me anything more than that. So, you know, how do we measure student engagement? Uh, to us, um, what we narrowed down to was uh, four things. Uh, student learning plan, how are they, um, you know, uh, progressing in their, in their learning plan, basically the schedule uh, that they've set for themselves. Um, are they on pace, not on pace? As you know, uh, when students come into your class, they, especially in the asynchronous environment, you have no idea where a student should be um, on a given day. Um, so we looked at possibilities, how we can make this practical for teachers. How can you see where a student should be uh, at, at a given time and place, especially when they're all starting at a different time, different place, right? Uh, and they're finishing at different times as well. So this whole idea of personalized learning, uh, how do we make it really happen without us uh, having to become managers uh, than say teachers, right? Um, assessments, how do we formulate assessments that are meaningful for you as a teacher and a student to see the things that you are excelling at and things you need to focus on. Um, the other is analytics. How do we dive deeper into kind of uh, uh, analytics besides looking at they've visited this page and they've looked at this uh, particular lesson, uh, you know, they've logged on this day. Um, the very basic rudimentary analytics available within learning management systems, right? And finally, uh, I think communication is an important part of, um, you know, um, student engagement. Uh, how do we make this happen without, again, a teacher be becoming overwhelmed uh, with uh, 
um, with the work they have to do, especially, as I said, students being at different place, different pace. Um, so with that, I'm gonna look at, uh, first we're gonna look at a scheduler because that really is the first thing that students do is they come in, they wanna build a schedule for completing a course. And that varies from student to student uh, and classroom to classroom. For blended classroom, it's everyone probably finishing at the same time. In an asynchronous environment, everyone's starting and finishing at a different, different times, right? So what we at the Content Connections have developed is a scheduler uh, that is populated when a student comes into the course. Um, when I say populated, it, it really is um, based on the tasks that are um, put together by the teacher in the course. Uh, we give you a prepackaged course, but obviously you can customize it to your needs. And whatever tasks you have, uh, are utilized to populate a, a schedule based on uh, pre-configured settings by the teacher. So a teacher might say you have 12 months or from a start date, or you might have four months period, uh, you know, uh, or you have to finish, everyone has to finish by end of June, perhaps. Uh, all of those variables are controlled by the teacher uh, and the institution. And within those constraints, a, a schedule is out a standard five-day schedule is output to a student. And here's a sample of it. And then it also outlines what do they have to do each day on the right-hand side to do today's task, tomorrow's task, uh, you know, and uh, for every course that they're in. Um, if you click on the settings, uh, where it says five days a week, managed settings, if you click on that, it leads to a, a settings page where a student can customize their own uh, learning progress, um, how they wanna work through the course. Maybe you're an elite athlete, you're not available on Wednesdays or a uh, period of time. So you can set all of those parameters as a learner, uh, as long as you are not exceeding the parameters set by the teacher. Okay. Um, you can also, if you happen to fall behind, uh, you have some overdue tasks, all you can, you can go into our system and you can reschedule those tasks with a click of a mouse. So uh, you, now you have a new calendar to work with and still meeting the, the timeline that you have set for yourself. Um, as a uh, student, you can also add additional activities uh, that um, you, know, um, you feel are important, may not be part of the course, maybe outside of the course. So you can, uh, enter those and those become part of your, your scheduler. And days off, uh, as a student, you can enter days off. As I said, you could, you could have a vacation time. As we know, online students, many of them kind of work on their own schedule. So, um, you know, uh, setting aside times uh, that you are not available, that's factored into developing that schedule. And then the professional development, for example, uh, that could be something that's input by a teacher or uh, the school uh, administrative level that a school is closed. So most activities are scheduled during that time uh, in our scheduler. So um, basically that covers, you know, how our scheduler works from a uh, student perspective. We'll dive into the back end of how it works kind of for the um, our uh, audience, um, uh, the, the teachers and administrators, all right? Uh, that'll be a bit later on. So the next thing we wanna look at is assessments, right? So one of the things you do is when you do assessments, we have quizzes, we have tests, we have projects, uh, you may have assignments, uh, various ways of assessing students. Uh, you might have forms or wikis. The question is, how do you segregate that data? How do you actually make it meaningful? So uh, one of the things we've done is with our assessments, we have really made an effort of classifying things. Um, for example, types of questions, uh, we classify them according to Bloom's taxonomy. And then we classify within those levels, uh, we define the questions uh, based on level of difficulty, easy, medium, hard. And then you can go ahead and also add learning standards. With every question, you can say this question is attached to this learning standard. And the beautiful thing about this is we are in process of developing a grade book that will allow you to 
either see uh, learners' progress based on learning standards or a classic view. Um, so you can flip-flop between the two different views uh, depending on how you want to see and what do you want to see. Sometimes looking at student progress by learning standards over time is a valuable insight into uh, how their growth chart has been, right? So um, we've structured our assessment tools around this, this kind of a structure here. So here's a typical formative assessment. Uh, being a math teacher, I've chosen a math course. Um, you know, with every lesson, um, there is formative assessment that comes in a form of questions. And uh, when students come in, they um, have the opportunity to work on the question on the whiteboard. Whatever they do on the whiteboard, it stays there. It doesn't disappear. So, you know, you have an opportunity to, um, you know, revisit. Uh, you can also flag questions, as you can probably see right here. Some of the, like, number 6, 13, and 9 are flagged. What that tells is for a student to revisit perhaps for whatever reason, maybe they didn't understand how to do these. The beauty of this is the teacher can go into the student's profile and see the questions they flagged and respond right here and back and forth. You can have that conversation without having to send emails, cut and paste and attach files to, uh, to an email. So it's all, all there in one place. And that produces definite efficiency for teachers and, and students. Now you'll see that some of the questions are, uh, are in red, some are in green, some are in yellow. What they uh, emphasize is some of these questions you are proficient at, namely the green. Um, the yellow uh, means you are developing. Uh, in, that, in that area. And then uh, the red are uh, the ones you really, uh, you know, in an emerging stage, right, in your, in your learning. So with every question, when you click on show answer, it'll show you the answer. And uh, if there's a solution, uh, you click on the solution button, it will uh, show you the solution. And in our math courses, every single question has a solution video. So, um, you know, it really cuts down on the number of emails you as a teacher will receive. Uh, not to say we don't like to interact with students, but formative assessment, they're in the middle of a night, you're nowhere to be found. They're not gonna wait till tomorrow, right? If they can have that information at their fingertips. So we made that really easy. And it really cuts down on the amount of, um, you know, support you need to provide. And often, you know, students still don't get it. And then you maybe you wanna have a, a follow up on it. Again, they can, you know, flag the questions for you to review later. Our assessment questions can exist in various forms. It can be videos, text, audios, or images. So um, um, tomorrow session, so I'm putting a little plug for my tomorrow session. Uh, we'll look at some of these, um, how do you create a video or an audio solution? They're meant to be made very easy. You don't need additional technology outside, download some sort of video recorder, audio recorder, attach a file. We've removed all those barriers uh, to make it simple. Even things like when people are submitting assignments, you know, um, you're getting into this idea of uh, convert it to PDF, send it, you know, there's a, they have to take pictures, they're poor quality. Well, in our system, you can upload anything. It will automatically be converted to a format that you can annotate. Um, analytics is the next thing I think that's really important as we looked at that list of things. Uh, in analytics uh, is, is one of the powerful tools, I think, uh, of our platform. So, you know, just starting out, when you visit our homepage, we call it the Explorer uh, by clicking on the top left hand corner here, the stat three stacks of paper. Um, you end up on our homepage. Uh, as I said, we call it Explorer. It has a wealth of information. It's clean. Uh, You're not overwhelmed with a lot of unnecessary clutter. Uh, on the side, it has, you know, things that are due today, tomorrow, the, the calendar kind of you know, to-do list kind of follows a student everywhere. So it's in their forefront in terms of, um, you know, reminding them that these are things you need to do. It's not kind of hidden away on one page. Uh, the other thing you'll recognize here is uh, a little bar under the name of the course. And that bar shows the progress in the course. So the first one, it says 11% course progress. It's green. 
the green bar simply indicates the student is on pace. They haven't fallen behind. So it's a quick summary, okay? Um, and the pacing is based on the calendar that the scheduler uh, that um, um, we have set up for the student and the student can modify. And then if, if we go into um, the next one, you'll see this one little difference is a triangle warning that tells you the student uh, has fallen behind uh, in, in the learning process. Um, you know, there's a little warning, um, you know, there's it requires some attention. And if there was some progress, it would be a red bar uh, to indicate. And then also, it's, you know, a friendly reminder, you got 143 days to complete the course based on, uh, you know, the course deadline established by the teacher. So it, it clearly outlines, you know, the urgency on, on part of the student, hey, I need to be on top of things, hopefully. Um, when you click on, when you click on any of these uh, tiles, so, you know, where my mouse is. I don't know if you guys are able to see my mouse. Um, it will land you to this page. Uh, this page are the analytics. So here's a student that has partially worked through the course. It's my daughter, Gerline. Uh, she really didn't work through the course. It was me. Uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I've taken a snapshot of her engagement in the learning. And this is our uh, test course. You know, it tells you a few things here about a student. The student course summary has completed 11% of the course um, uh, activities and spent 46 hours. You're saying 46 hours. Well, the reason we spent 46 hours is because this is our test shell and <laughs> we spent a lot of time testing and we're revisiting, replaying lessons. So, you know, it accumulates those times, right? Um, and then the assessment progress. Uh, this is a reference to formative assessment. So the lessons that have a formative assessment attached to them will have the circle uh, uh, graph and one, every learning object has a, a circle graph to indicate uh, that um, uh, progress as well. So uh, transformations, 88% completed, 26% of the assessments completed. You'll notice the, uh, the assessment circle has three colors. Again, emphasizing emerging, developing, and proficient. Actually, when you hover over it in real time, it kind of gives you that um, that percentage as well. Uh, these are unit by unit. And then uh, you'll see that uh, graphing radicals and rationales, there's a flag beside it. That tells me there is something that is flagged. So if I'm a teacher looking at this, this student's profile, I can immediately see there's something been flagged uh, that I should look at. So it, it really narrows it down. Uh, you don't have to fish around for information. And then when you expand by clicking on the plus sign, um, the, the, the unit, it really breaks it down by lesson now. Uh, what you see is the progress by lesson by lesson. Now, one other thing you'll notice is, well, how does the student know, or how do we know, or how does the system know that 95% of the lesson has been watched? Uh, what we do at that end is uh, we um, have developed a solution which allows us to see if a student has actually watched a video. So if they scrub through the video, it doesn't register. Simple as that. So they have to actually have to watch it. And then you say, what if somebody just turns it on, leaves it on? Well, one of the things about our video lessons is they're not videos, they're interactive learning objects. So uh, periodically you'll see as they move from one slide to the next, it asks the learner to engage in, 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 the, in the learning. Uh, there are tasks for them to perform pauses, you have to hit continue button. Um, it doesn't move on its own. So really, student really has to do a lot of things to work around that, um, that system that show that they've actually watched it, right? And I say, if they can do that, then they deserve an A in the course. <laughs> uh, looking at uh, the assessments, again, it's broken down further. And clearly the student, you know, one minute uh, on the assessment, that was me just clicking through some stuff. Uh, shows that I didn't spend much time on it, right? So you can read a lot into, in, in combination of things, how much time they spent, uh, how much did they complete, um, to determine whether a student was genuinely engaged uh, in the learning process. Now, when you click on the assessment circle, you can actually click on the assessment circle. It takes you to a page that looks like this. It 
further breaks down by question. So in this case, we're looking at students, um, you know, in transformations unit and pre-calculus, all of the lessons. Uh, they're proficient in six questions. They've attempted developing in four uh, and emerging in six, and they flagged one. Um, it tells you a level of difficulty, uh, tells you a type of question and their performance, right? So it really breaks it down for the student. And then if a student wants a review for this unit, they can go look at say, you know what? There are six questions that I was kind of not sure about. I didn't quite make it through that. I labeled them as emerging uh, according to the system. Um, how do I um, go about preparing for this test? Well, focus on the things you need to work on, right? So it really serves as a- So exciting. I'm at my session. Um, he's boring though. Um, you just... sure you don't. <gasps> What? Well, you should write it around and sure it works on both. Hello? Uh, next thing I want to go into is um, uh, looking at, um, you know, how do we filter these things? You can really filter these questions, types of questions, assessment, difficulty. So it's really easy for you to kind of, um, you know, um, really prepare for those, uh, those students that, um, that need attention again. Now, in terms of Teacher Explorer um, page, it looks uh, very similar to a student, as you can see that we don't have a to-do list. Uh, it show, it's a quick summary of each course. I have quite a few courses here. It tells you number of students enrolled in each course. And then you can look at the same sort of thing per class, all right? So you can look at the class and uh, kind of, um, uh, see how your class is progressing through the course. And you can click on a specific task and uh, you can look at your entire class for that task, especially if you have a blended learning class see, to see if everyone has watched or attempted the assessments. And if they haven't, you can click, click, click and send them an email. And then after, um, you know, all of that, uh, we have created a kind of summary dashboard and a lot of other tools that I won't be going into. And that dashboard uh, is uh, accessed by clicking our analytics icon. So this dashboard really shows you how many students you have, how many are behind schedule, how many are on target, how many haven't even started. So you can filter through just by clicking on these and how many are new within that last week and how many are past their end date, right? that you need to finalize a mark for. So, you know, rather than trying to fish this information somewhere else, it's available at your fingertips, All right? So these students uh, shows their progress and type of course they are in, uh, they're in a blended or DL course, so you can label the courses and you can filter that information according to those things. And uh, you can change, uh, you can see when they last logged in, what was their start date by toggling this. Uh, then their status, are they in progress or have they completed the course? And then they have a profile that you can review and access information, we'll look at that later. And then some alerts um, and emails. Uh, I won't spend too much time on this. Um, now filters, you can, as I said, filter the information. So if you wanna see a student who has completed the course in the past somewhere, you can just simply click on archive and see those students. So we don't uh, get rid of the information that you really, um, um, you know, may want to access later on. One of the things I see as a teacher is when I look at my course is I see that uh, students often come back again, take it again. And I wanna look at how they've done in the course in the past, maybe uh, be upfront about my interventions with, with that student. So uh, this is really, um, will be, um, valuable to you in terms of looking at past history attempts in different courses. So you can access that through our system. The other thing you'll recognize is um, school counselors. Now, one of the things I, I often get emails and I'm sure you all of you do is from your, your uh, neighboring school is saying, how is this student doing in your course? Um, well, what we have done is we've created a portal for counselors um, so you can set up a counselor access to students at a specific feeder school. When I say feeder school, your, your bricks and mortar school in your neighborhood. So if you have 20 schools, you can set up, you know, 20, 30, 40 counselor accounts and they can dive in and see the same 
things that you can, except they can't uh, do anything about it. Uh, they can, uh, the best they can do is realize the student is fallen behind by looking at the course progress, you know, it's read, and then uh, send an email or, you know, invite the student in for a conversation uh, within their school structures, right? So these are more for cross enroll students, I would say, uh, than say, um, you know, uh, purely a DL student, although DL counselor can access the same sort of thing. So they will only see the information about students from their school. They do not get access to all of the other students, right? Now, the analytics is, is one piece of the puzzle. What do we do once we know a student isn't engaged, isn't doing things that they are uh, required to do? or are not following through their um, learning plan, what do we do about it? So around that, you know, it, again, it's very challenging to identify that, uh, that information in LMSs uh, alone is our system allows you to now work with the student right from within. So once you know a group of students are not working, you have communication information at your at your tip. So one of the things I want to go over is basically um, student profile. You can access student profile. Remember uh, where it says profile? Just click on that icon in the earlier slides. It, it will land you at this page. You can see the contact information for that student right here. More importantly, if they're taking more than one course in our system, you can see how they're progressing through the course in the system. Um, and if there's a trend that they have fallen behind in two, three, or four courses, you can certainly uh, then engage maybe a school-based team or a counselor or administration. Maybe it is a larger issue than just your course. So having that uh, summary of information right there at the fingertips is so valuable. I, I find it very valuable when I'm working with my students. Now, emailing, again, very easy. Click on email or check off several names, send email, uh, very easy. Just type in the information. We have put in the math and uh, the chemistry um, um, tools, uh, I guess, uh, editors that allows you to respond to even, you know, science and math questions uh that are often difficult to type out in the typical email message so you can do that right here and you can send this email to a parent and cc yourself as well or other teachers in the course so they know what is going on if you wish to do so now the other feature we built out is in the communication part is one of the things i end up doing is i end up sending repeated emails about you know welcome to the course or i report uh, one of the things you can do is on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see it says preset messages none. You can actually click on that and create new mess uh, preset messages. So this is so you don't have to continuously do this. In fact, once you configure this, uh, it will do it on on its own uh, based on the parameters you have set up. So once you um, once you create your preset message, uh, you save it. It ends up on a list like this. And once we create the preset message, uh, you can have attachments, all sorts of things you can do with a typical email, is now you can go to a, at the bottom, there's a um, automated messages. So what you can do is you can uh, put in a title, uh, the course that you want to send it to, and you can select your preset message, who do you want to send it to, and I want to send this on entry. So it's a welcome email, I want this to go out as soon as a student comes in. So as soon as a student comes in, um, they receive this email, welcome to the course, and it has all the information that I want to share with my student and the parents. Uh, so they're always in the loop in, in my communication. Now, there are other possibilities. We call them triggers. So on entry, you can have a positive feedback loop. Say you've been on target for, you know, uh, 50 days, four months, three weeks. You can change the units, you can change the, the, the quantity, right? Uh, deadlines, past deadlines, and, uh, inactive uh, students. So if somebody's been inactive for three weeks, six weeks, nine weeks, you can set up as many automated messages as you wish and it will take care of you. What, what that did, did for me is personally is allowed me to kind of um, uh, 
dive into uh, teaching rather than management. Uh, the system takes care of the student management, right? Uh, the reaching out part, looking at the information. I don't need to worry about it because I've configured all those things uh, here and, and it's uh, automatically taken care of based on my inputs. It doesn't mean you can take a vacation. It just means you know you can focus on other aspects of, of teaching and learning. We talked about alerts. Uh, when you click on alerts, you'll end up on notes page. Uh, this is where you know uh, you can have all sorts of things like a student IEP or even a reference student IEP or other things that are valuable. Maybe you communicated with the parents, uh, you wanna keep a log of it. So this is a one place kind of where you can keep all of that for that student and you can edit and uh, view and delete as, as you wish. Now, the other feature in, in, in addition to communication is, as I said, we can uh, look at students past history, right? So uh, I'm looking at Gurleen. Uh, I looked at the archives and I see that Darlene has made two attempts in the course. Sometimes the student says, you know what, I want to continue with what I've done in the past. So you can always restore their past attempt uh, in terms of data and they can work with it as they wish. And then the parameters around that calendar, where we talked about that, those can be set here at the end uh, by, the, by the teacher. Okay, or the school. So this is a, this is a beautiful feature, uh, I think, that allows you to really customize how you deliver your online program. So you can, you can set a end date by a course or all of the courses. It could be fixed. Everyone finishes by November 30th. Uh, or it could be variable, right? So you can select the variable. 12 months from the start date. Eight weeks from, you know, start date. Whatever it might be. So then it is really uh, different for every student. So a student starts in uh, November, may have until November of next year. A student starts in December, if they have 12 months, they'll have until 12 months in uh, uh, yeah, December of next year. So what it does is you don't have to manage all of that. That's all taken care of. When a student is reaching those deadlines, it reads into it, it sends those messages, preset messages based on what you have uh, set up for yourself. And you can obviously go in and uh, for individual students extend or change the date as needed. Sometimes we have students that take up to two years to complete the course because their IEP allows them. So you can extend their deadline. Okay. Uh, now in terms of our system, uh, LMS compatibility, uh, one of the beautiful things is we have created two products. One is to work with LMSs. The other is to work exclusively um, outside of an LMS, those that just teach in a regular classroom. So this could be used, a platform that is standalone. You don't need an LMS. You don't need a big tech team. Uh, and it'll serve your purpose. The other is through an LMS. And we are compatible with any LMS uh, that has an LTI compa uh, compatibility. Um, so Canvas, Blackboard, uh, Brightspace, Moodle, or any others that have, as I say, LTI capability. Course features, uh, we'll talk more about this tomorrow's uh, presentation, but I just wanna emphasize uh, our course features. We re really created a minimalistic approach to our dashboard, so to remove distractions, interactive lessons, uh, content, we'll look at that tomorrow again, the responsive design, you know, being able to work cross-platform, HTML, HTML5 compliant content, and I'll spend a little bit of time going over our learning repository, how it can be utilized to create courses. Um, so I'll, I'll share a little bit about that and customizing courses and new assessment database for our math courses, those you teach math. And, and obviously for our new courses, we will have for uh, science and uh, English, we'll have uh, databases as well. But for math, we're looking at uh, upward, just to give you a preview about 10,000 new questions in our database uh, that will be released with our new courses. Questions, answers, and thank you. I do my best. Uh, hopefully uh, you got something out of it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. That was a good time. I think we have five minutes remaining. Great. 
<clears throat> Thank you, Harjeet. That was a, an excellent overview, and I'm glad that I was able to uh, watch it as well to see the changes in the developments that's happened with Content Connections. Very impressive. Uh, questions, folks, for Harjeet? Feel free to text right. away. If not now, you can always email. So we are always available. Over, you want to put your email in the text chat? Just yeah, text. it's um, yeah, I can do that. Um, to find it, I see I'm not. Uh... Great, and uh, the next session as well is uh, at ten thirty as well on Friday for content connections to find out a little bit more in terms of what's uh, what's going on with, with the group, et cetera. I don't know whether Grant has anything to chime in on as well, but uh, you can see info at contentconnections.ca. Obviously you can find uh, lots of links to email addresses as well on the website, so. Yeah, the, the email at info at content connections always reaches our team and we're pretty good about responding to emails. So feel free to send us anything uh, through that as well. And we have a little email form on our website as well. That's another way. So there's many ways Excellent. to access. That's There's it. a question for you from David. Go for it. In the text chat. Oh. So um, can teachers link to individual lessons from within the, their LMS as well? Can they link to individual lessons? Yes. Uh, what it is, what we do is, and this will be part of our demo slime, so I'm giving you a little bit of a preview, is you can take our links and embed them in any LMS. So uh, whether it's in Canvas or otherwise, and through LTI configuration, uh, you can access our content, right? So you need a, you need some sort of LTI credentials, which we provide with you once you become a uh, uh, member of our family. Great, great. Yes, and, and Rihanna is sending love about the scheduler, so that's great. And Grant's let us know a little bit more, more courses uh, coming up. Um, that's excellent. And uh, the demo slime is there as well. So you have the opportunity, I think you're running two or three or something in the, the slime as it, it comes up. So um, we're looking forward to that as well, Harjeet. And, uh, and fo folks as well, uh, it, for those here, I just learned that there's some excellent prizes which just came in. So you want to be at the demo slam for sure tomorrow afternoon. If you don't have a ticket, you only bought a one day, it might be worth it just to put your name in, just to come to the demo slam and, and get some of the prizes. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm a rookie to that, so I'll do my best to uh, share my view on it. Hey, everybody support it. It's okay. <laughs> it's, just, it's just fun and it's always different. So uh, we're looking forward to that. No, no. So thanks. thanks I'm gonna thanks turn thanks off the recording now. If there's other questions, feel free to continue to ask uh, for Arjit and Grant. So thanks, guys. Yeah, somebody asked one question there about uh, will the current LTL links work? Well, we're moving to a new platform, so uh, new server. So you will need to download our new courses, which will become available um, about middle of August for you to do that. And if you want some of the courses sooner, just send us an email. If we have them ready before that, we'll be happy to share them. As you know, it's a it's an onerous task to assemble everything in different learning management systems, different packages, different SCORM packages, <laughs> and have them ready, right? So we're in the process of doing that right now, and we, we will have that ready, not just only for um, math, but science and English courses, and more to come next year. Super. Like anything with technology, it always changes. Yes, so true. But the, the key is, is that you guys are on top of it and continue to move forward. So that's, that's excellent. Oh. Thanks. Thank you.